Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg. Uh, it's another cold day in New Haven. Actually, it's even snowing out, which means that I get to once again show my W.C. Fields uh, clip. And it ain't a quick night out for man or beast. Um, today I notice I have 250 subscribers, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot. But it is amazing since it wasn't that long ago when I only had 30 subscribers. So uh, bit by bit, the channel seems to be getting responses and lots and lots of people, many more than 250 people, seem to be watching some of the videos. So thank you very much. And if you haven't subscribed, please do because it makes me happy. So the other thing that makes me happy is getting um, more fountain pens. And a few weeks ago, um, I came home and on my doorstep was a box of vintage fountain pens from a very old friend who's just wonderful. And I, I'm telling all these people that I am into fountain pens. And a lot of times people say, oh, I've got some old fountain pens. I should send them to you. But they never do. But this person actually did. And they're, they're wonderful. Um, she had had them in her house. She's moving. She's going through with stuff. And a, a long time ago, she had been collecting, sort of collecting them. And also some of them, she had actually um, used them and all the way going back to um, high school. So she um, uh, sent them off to me. And they were in various different states. And I have become friends with Nathaniel Cerf, who is, uh, runs a business called PenMarket.com. I'll put um, a link to that uh, in the comments and on the screen. And um, uh, Nathaniel has done an incredible job of restoring the pens and making sure that they write. So it's shout out, shout out to him. Um, my friend, I'll, I'll, I'll keep her name private, uh, but she is just a fantastic person. And I thank her very, very much. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to show them to you. What's sort of marvelous about the pens is that they kind of constitute uh, a little history of sort of pens from, from the middle of the 20th century and, and none of them are like, you know, super ostentatious, ostentatious pens. But they're, they're all nice and they're kind of pen that you would have if it was 1930 and you wanted a good pen to use every day. Um, and, uh, or 1950 or 1960. And I, I do have a small collection of vintage pens, but this really sort of, gave, sort of filled out the history. And so I'm going to go through them, talk talk a little about about each one. Um, I'm not going to do any drawings today or anything, but you know, just talk a little bit about their filling system and their and their qualities and everything. I'm sort of so happy, excited about to have them that I thought I'd share them um, with you. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is show you these pens under the other camera here. Um, and focus on, uh, I hope this is in focus, and sort of w work through them by pen companies. This is, I think actually this is the earliest pen in the, in the group. It is the Wall Eversharp Deco Band pen. Um, the Deco Band is this element here, which has actually kind of what they called a Doric uh, pop, uh, 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 pattern uh, that, uh, you know, kind of Greek pattern that they had on a lot of their pens. I love the clip and the little roller here that is supposed to protect your uh, pocket so it doesn't tear when you clip it on. Um, I love this little element here. Um, It has a 14K nib. Let's see if we can make it focus. There we go. And see how nice that is, I think. Um, where it says Eversharp. Now, 
Wall was originally a company that made Addy machines, and then they bought Eversharp, which was a pencil company. And for a while, the two companies, even though they were owned by the same company, so if you bought a pen, it had Wall on it, and then if you bought a pencil, it said Eversharp, and then they combined the two names. Eventually, the company went out of business in terms of making pens. I think they still make razors. Wall makes makes razors, and then they company's been, um, I think it has come back, you know, where, but it's, it's not the same company that went out of business in the 50s, of course. Um, uh, anyway, it's, it's just a really beautiful um, pen, and it's from the 1920s, um, and it, it writes very nicely. Um, I'll show you a very brief um, uh, writing sample. Um, but it has a very, very nice writing. It feels beautiful in the hands. I love, this is an early plastic model, um, but I just love the way it feels. This is, I mean, I just, I'm <laughs> not going on and on, but it is just a gorgeous pen. So it's sort of now one of my favorite pens in my, in my collection. Now, undoubtedly, when, like, if they were doing this model pen at um, Wall Eversharp, they were thinking about the Barker Duofold, which was just an enormously popular pen. And I think they still, I believe they still make um, Parker Duofold pens. The, the, um, so they've been making it for 100, 100 years. Um, this is a Duofold Junior. So this would be a pen that probably dates from maybe 1930 or so, um, and it's smaller, obviously smaller than the um, uh, Eversharp. It has a really nice 14 karat gold nib. And it's just very elegant. The duo fold comes in just so many different colors and sizes. There's a, a, a much bigger size than this. This is a little under five inches. Um, and you can see Let's just see, get a size comparison. Let's, um, so this is a metropolitan, you know, contemporary pen. You can sort of see how that, what that looks like. Um, and let's see, here is a Conklin Durograph, which is a contemporary pen. You can see how that is taking off from this style um, pen. Anyway, very, very nice. Um, it, it has a finer line. It's a little scratchy. We'll, we'll uh, give you a pen sample. I mean, a writing sample of it. Uh, now, I forgot to mention that this is a lever filler pen. Um, while the Parker um, Duofold here is a button filler. So lever filler, as I'm sure many of you know, has a sack in it and you pull the lever up and that has a, a piece of metal inside that pushes down on this little sort of balloon sack and that, um, uh, so that's closed and you put that in the ink and then you push the lever down and that opens the sack up and that creates a vacuum and the ink goes into the pen. Um, the duo fold here, this one model, has a button filler. So if I open the back and you see that there's a little button in the back here. Um, and you push on the button, you push it down and then you put that in the ink and then the ink that creates a vacuum, the ink goes into the pen. And that was uh, something that was patented by Parker and was a very popular way to um, fill a pen. Now, that leads us to another um, Parker pen in this little collection. Um, this is the Vacuumatic pen. I love this one in plastic. It's kind of wonderful plastic with these rings. And it's a little bit bigger than, I think it's a little bigger, yes, it is bigger than the uh, 
duo fold. Um, the duo fold is very, in this model, it's very simple. The top and the bottom, right? Has the ball, still has the ball clip. While this model, which is probably, this is the standard pen, this is probably around 1933. Um, and uh, the founder of Parker, of course, is George S. Parker, and he founded the company in the late 19th century. But in the 1930s, they were very proud in their ads to say that a professor, I guess this is, he was a professor, Joseph Platt, was the one who designed this uh, system, the vacuumatic system um, for um, the pen. And um, also has like a button for the back, and you go, let's see if I can get it open, and then you push down on this, and then again, as you let it go, the ink fills into the pen. And this works really, really well. Um, and I think what's great about these pens too is that once you close them, it's safe, you know, you can't push the button, and so they post really, really well. It's something that I forgot to mention. That's an advantage, too, of the lever fillers. So you can post them, you don't have to worry about spilling ink everywhere. Um, and this also has a 14 karat um, nib in it. Um, I love this sort of translucent... Um, plastic with these rings around it. This was, I don't know if this, my friend, this was a relative um, or whether, um, she said that she was, for a while was collecting pens and it has the name of a doctor. It was a doctor's pen. Um, uh, I really like, I know that for some people having somebody's name on the pen takes the value of the pen away, but I actually think that makes it better. I love the idea that somebody else was writing with this pen that you know prescriptions were being written or poems or or is being used in a journal and now it's being used again I, I just love that idea it's like it says a the, the pen has a soul to it and a history um, so uh, and I have a feeling too that eventually having a name on the pen you know as hundreds and hundreds of years go by that will actually make the pens more valuable rather than less uh, I just um, cleaned this so it's dripping a little bit of water. Um, okay, and that brings us to the, I guess, the newest pen in the group, which is the um, Parker 51. This is a special. I believe it's from the 1960s. That's because the special edition of the Parker 51 originally was introduced with a black jewel on the top. This has a, 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 a grayish white pearl um, jewel, which was more typical of the part other the earlier Parker 51, but then they started doing the Parker 51 special with it um, later. Um, and, uh, and really it's nice because, you know, you get like a little mini history of Parker, which is you know, such a successful company in the um, 20th century in terms of fountain pens, and you're seeing their different popular models here. The Parker 51 is known really as the most popular fountain pen in the world. It's sort of probably the most imitated pen, enormously um, uh, successful, um, uh, introduced into the, in the um, 40s, and um, the 51 was um, uh, special was added um, in 1950. It's a somewhat initially a less expensive version um, of the Parker 51. There are so many different versions and colors that they um, uh, come in. Um, uh, this has um, a different kind of filling system. Open it up issue. Um, this is still a system that is, is used today. Um, pilots sometimes use it. You press on the sort of sack uh, here and um, uh, it then creates a vacuum and then the ink comes into it. It's the 
um, I believe they call that the aromatic, it's called the aromatic filling system versus the vacuumatic um, uh, filling system. All these um, pen companies were trying to be his contemporary as modern, and um, the matic part makes it sound more modern and robotic, I guess. Um, uh, it's interesting today that makes it sound old-fashioned and nostalgic, but back then that would have been uh, more um, cutting edge. Um, this is just, you know, a classic design. Um, reminds one of a rocket ship or a missile and supposedly was uh, tremendously influenced by airplane designs, the initial, the initial uh, pen for this. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but it actually says um, uh, Parker Special on the filling system. And it actually even tells you how to, how to use it. Um, and uh, another difference between the Special was that where the Parker 51 would be in gold, would be a gold nib. This was an octanium, so-called octanium nib, which is a kind of eight different kinds of uh, an alloy nib. Um, but actually, uh, the models that have the white pearl on them may be, I'm not sure about this, might be, it might be a gold nib, it might be a steel nib. Um, so some of the later versions of the special actually had, had gold, gold nibs. So I think, in any case, I think this pen is from the 1960s. Um, And that brings us to the Schaefer Balance. This is the largest of the pens, I think. Let's see. Is that true? Oh, it's about the same size as the um, Wall Eversharp pen. Um, and it, too, is, these both are lever, lever fillers, right? Uh, which is a little classic um, filling systems. Um, Schaefer pens are sort of, um, really Schaefer is like the big competitor of war between Schaefer and, and Parker. Um, uh, the uh, Schaefer Pen Company was founded by Walter Schaefer in Bloomingfield, Iowa, and he is the one who actually patents and, and comes up with the uh, lever filling system in 1907 that becomes so popular in various um, versions of it that so many different pens use. It really is um, a crucial um, invention in 20th century fountain pens because the key thing is you didn't want to have to bring a whole bottle of ink with you to fill the pen. This way you could fill the pen and more or less, if you knew what you were doing, not get it, be, it wouldn't be too terribly um, messy. And um, uh, uh, so it, it was a, just a great invention and, and kept on being used into the 1950s until various other ways of, of filling pens. Now, in comparison, though, I have to say about lever filling um, is that it's, it takes a long time to clean them. That's the big pain in the neck. Although I, I think you should keep in mind that most people, when they used a fountain pen in the 20th century, tended to keep one color like black or blue in the pens, and they weren't constantly changing colors the way that um, people who collect fountain pens are always using different colors in them. So uh, cleaning the pen would not be something that you did as frequently as I do when I try to put in a different color or... I keep changing pen, which pens I'm going to use. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of the difficulty of cleaning, but there's no doubt about it that um, a, a pen with a converter, I think, is so much easier to, to uh, clean. And you can also see that the popularity of cartridges later um, sort of supplants this kind of um, filling system. Um, this is a big pen, so it has a really nice, um, beautiful, nib it seems to be it's really quite large it's either six or it could even be an eight i guess and again it's a lovely 14 carat nib two tone nib um, all these pens appear to me to have their original nibs on them because they all have the brand i also like what's nice about this it has a nice ink window because you never sort of know i feel like when i'm filling 
um, a lever filled pen, whether, you know, is the ink really going in uh, to the pen? Um, that's the other thing because it's all sort of going on behind the scenes. And this is nice that it introduces um, uh, the window so you can tell whether there's ink in it. Um, very, very nice. Actually, I notice all the pens too that I've been showing you, they all they all post very secure, securely. Um, they all have very nice clips to them. And then this is a nice thing about Schaefer pens. I think this is cool, the, the little white dot, which is part of their sort of trademark on their pens. Um, although not, not all Schaefer pens have it, but this, this one does. Okay. okay, so in the 1950s, um, two things are happening. Ballpoint pens are coming out, and that is supplanting um, fountain pens. People now are suddenly all using um, ballpoint pens. And then also Parker with the Parker 51 is just, you know, going to the top of the heap with, with pens. So if you're going to have a fountain pen, you want to try to do a pen that's sleek and looks something like the um, Parker pen. And then Schaefer introduces a really cool filling system um, called the Snorkel system. And thus this pen, this is the Admiral pen, has it. Um, and this is, a, this is just so cool looking. So you take the back off and screws. Well, actually, and you can see it's actually turning it. And then you screw it. And you can see that this little snorkel comes out. And then this back part comes out, and then you push this. So even though the pen's clean, if I push it up now, I think a lot of it should be like a little bit of water will come out. But anyway, you stick this into the uh, ink, and you don't have to get the nib wet or anything. And then you fill it, and then you turn it again, and the little snorkel goes back into the pen. And uh, the idea is that then you don't have to even have a piece of paper towel or anything to uh, clean it off and your hands will be ink free. Um, so that's totally cool. And I just love, oh, there it goes. Couldn't help myself. So then, <laughs> and then you turn it and it goes in again. Let me just do that. Uh, 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 uh. And there it comes out again. It's just fabulous. So in the world of fountain pens, this is about as exciting as you get as this little snorkel invention. So this came out in the 1950, early 50s and uh, I guess was sort of popular. And, and the cool thing is that there's a television commercial that Ethel, I'm a huge fan of I Love Lucy, and Ethel of I Love Lucy, um, Ethel Mertz does a commercial for Schaefer, which I will show you. A little bit of. Oh, Lucy, I just got Fred's Christmas present. A Schaefer snorkel pen. You know, the one you fill without getting in the ink. Hmm? No, I mean the pen doesn't get in the ink. <laughs> Only the little tube does. That's why they call it a snorkel pen. You just twist the little knob and a special filling tube comes out and it drinks up the ink. Okay, now last, but definitely not least, is the Esterbrook SJ, which is a pen that I have um, used. Well, actually, I've shown you the Esterbrook J. Um, it's a lovely little red version. Um, it actually has the name of my friend on it, which I really love to have um, a pen by her that has her name on it so I can well remember her and remember her wonderful gift. Um, and um, what's great about the Esterbrook line, excuse me, so this is the SJ, this is the um, a J, so there are two reds here, the SJ, the J, and this is the L, so this is a little bit bigger. This is the uh, same size as the J, but um, more narrow. And the SJ is sort of their junior pen for smaller hands. Um, and they have this lovely um, 
uh, colored um, celluloid uh, outside, which I really, really like. And then the really cool thing about these pens, and I've shown you this before if you watch my videos, is they have these removable nibs and you can get these in all different forms. Um, they still make them, or, or let's say you can still buy them. Um, uh, they're very uh, easily bought on eBay um, and they come in just so many different varieties and broad, medium, fine, flexi, um, all kinds of different nibs. And then um, Osmoroid also makes nibs that fit into this pen. And in the day, this is a pen, pen that was available in the 50s. Um, the, the nibs were so popular that some other pens use these same, these same nibs that screw in and out. So that's a really cool thing about them. And this is such a successful pen that you can still buy these um, uh, on, on eBay for very little money. There's really a great place to start if you want to start collecting vintage pens. They do use a leather um, filler and they have sacks, rubber sacks, and a rubber sack tends to last for around 30 years. So the thing with these pens is if they're not restored, the sack dries out but it's fairly easy to um, replace the sack. So it's a great way to start if you want to uh, learn how to restore vintage pens. This is a good pen to begin with because it's not really that complicated to replace the sacks. Yeah, I mean, of course you have to get the sacks which they are sold at, at certain stores and you need all the stuff to do that. So whether it's worth it to do it if you just one pen is perhaps questionable, but um, because it's fairly easy to do, it's fairly, these are fairly inexpensive to buy um, uh, at uh, eBay. You know, you can get them as, I've got one as inexpensive as um, $30. And they come in all these different wonderful colors. So I am just a, a big fan of these particular pens. And you'll, as you know, you, because I've already talked about them in other, other videos. So it's nice to have. I didn't have a little SJ one, so it helps complete my collection of uh, Esterbrook pens. So that's really terrific. So here, here again are, are all the pens together, uh, dancing with happiness because I hope they found a good home. And uh, thanks, thanks again to um, Nathaniel Sir for his work restoring the pens. He sells pens on his website. You can send pens to him and he will fix them. Uh, so do that and thank my friend for her extraordinary generosity and thank you and once again please subscribe if you found this uh, video useful or any of my videos useful. Uh, see you soon.